we're going to find ourselves getting passed by multiple cars I mentioned earlier on. So Nuhoff in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Okay. Up front, they are sp getting uh, with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Varani, not very far apart at all here. But we just want to see how Halle Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming behind the old hairpin. I would say it's not the best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their piss up strategies from Ferrari lately, isn't it? What's going on? In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the out pedal, and up front he's dropped him all the way down the order. But Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hearing that earlier on as well. Typical, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. You love the slipstream jarring towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Barani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is at all. Pike's pushed more and fell and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike going to have a go. Well, don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin, Burma down Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. And look how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like dropping. He's like on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. to the back end of Bill Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Yeah, absolutely serious racing. They give a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at being enjoying himself oh watching dear. the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there as they're really bunching up now. Runners, it's time for round four and the F4 car this time round. The first visit this season to the combined long version 
of this circuit, the first of four visits we're going to have, and the first in uh, that we're going to have in the next two weeks. Uh, we'll be back next week, of course, with the LMP2s around this very same layout, but it's time for open wheelers, first of all, around this circuit. We've already had a few rounds of this championship, so let's see uh, where the points are standing after that. Curry Stas is currently at the top here by nine points out of Evan Krupp, well, the reigning champion. Jason Hightower only 11 points behind Stas as well. Uh, David Moore and Rick Putnam are fourth and fifth, followed by Matt Green. In dealt to David Hernandez, Ray Tier has only been at one round, and so he's a little bit further behind the rest in pro. In the AM standings, Dan Kosick leads after a couple of brilliant rounds uh, recently, uh, especially uh, in the first round, he's third overall. James Pettijohn is 19 back points behind already. J Scott Stadler is currently in third. Uh, Dylan Hestink and uh, Alexander Betchester around at the top five. AJ Condon and Pat Major are only one point apart with Tim Warchow next, Anthony Torino and Jamie Fender rounding out the 10 AMs who have made starts so far this season. And there's the overall standings, if you like. Dan Kosick's actually second overall, so the pro leader is followed by the AM leader in the overall championship standings as uh, as things stand. But there is still a very long way to go, including this one, the first of nine rounds remaining. Uh, and uh, as we begin, it is going to be a very nicely ordered field, if you like, with the pros ahead of the AMs, at least uh, as things stand at the moment. Myself, Ian Leary, and James Parfit with you for this round of the championship. You were saying to me just before we started recording, James, it's going to be interesting because open wheelers don't go round here very often. It is, and it is true as well. I don't think we had the F4 this time last season, but we did have a, a couple of open wheelers and we still got one more to go after this one, after starting with an open wheeler this season as well, of course. So um, it's not uncommon in this series, although it is uncommon relatively in the real world. Yeah, it's not um, something that you would naturally see. You know what I mean? An open wheeler going round noughts. It, it just isn't heard of, you know, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? I know there's been videos out there of people who have put the F1 car around here, but yeah, these guys are going to have to try and contend with the F4s and it's going to be interesting to see how they get on, I think. They've got to be careful going into the carousel due to the front wing hitting the floor. I've seen a couple of people pop out in practice and the curbs, of course, at Nords. Gotta love the curbs, but not in open wheelers. Yeah, you want to stay off them as much as possible. We look like we've got 13 starters for this one. Jacob Burke and Nancy Solomon look like they're at least starting from pit lane if they're starting at all. Hopefully they do start um, at the beginning of this one. Uh, it's going to be Evan Crutrow who starts from the front ahead of Rick Putnam. Corey Stas and Dean Diltz will be on that second row just in behind with Dave Mull and Dave Hernandez, the uh, only other of the six pros in the field. Uh, on row three. Then the Ampol sitter, Scott Sadler, ahead of Tim Warchow, who is at second. Alexander Mesh, third, ahead of Dan Kosick, championship leader. Chase Petterjohn, fifth in the uh, in the starting grid here with the Amtoy grid, that is. Tim Hessick and Jim Bender rounding out the uh, seven of them. And we get into uh, those who might not be starting this race at all, but let's wait and see on that front. They make their way down in towards the Tiergarten for the first time. They'll be shortly getting us underway. We'll see uh, pretty shortly whether Evan Kratman can really take uh, take control of this race. It would be very good for him in the points. He's currently nine behind Curry Stas after the opening three rounds of the season. Yeah, Mr. Consistent last season with Evan Kratman. Last season's champion as well. But sitting here looking in practice, both of the front two have had their issues. So they've got to try and tidy up that consistency a little bit i think otherwise neither of them are going to take the victory so it's going to be interesting to see how they get on here and who's going to be able to man uh, manage this f4 car at this very tricky circuit it, it, it certainly is uh, difficult as well let's see how we get on that will be in control of the field very shortly as the base truck pulls off to the right hand side and more time here for round four of the Terra Racing Ring Runners. We're ready to go at the North Sife again. A few restless uh, restless legs in the background as they all try and get uh, a jump on the start. Uh, leaving it long, maybe the longest of the season as we finally get underway in the F4 car. It's a good start for him. Put them immediately. Pulls in front of Corey Stas here, but he's not quite going away. Corey Stas has a look up the inside here for second place on the way down in towards the first corner. It is the full Mercedes Arena, don't forget, because of the combined long layout. And he here we go around the Mercedes Arena, side by side for Stas and Dilts into the uh, first few corners here. Dilts down the inside, looking for third position. He's going to go around the outside. 
successful big slide. Huge slide. He saves it and loses third place. So Dukes will go through. Norwich Chats, though, will be breathing a sigh of relief that he's still pointing the right way. Yeah, he is at the moment, which is great. Dean Deals getting through in third. Crowdfield done what he had to do. He did leave him really late on the jump. And he did that on purpose. Let's put it this way. He didn't want to get the run or somebody getting the run down past him going into turn one. Um, Evan Crowdfield out in front, Putnam and Dill. So you got Corey Stas, who's breaking away from Hernandez's group. And then Hernandez has got Mole, watch out, Sadler, Petty John in there, Dylan Hessling, Jamie Bender. Andy Solomon is out on the racetrack, but he's just obviously towards the back end. But Crowdfield under pressure from Putnam. Putnam has been brilliant so far this season. He missed the first round, but he's been first and second since. And look at this. He's going for the lead on the reigning champion. Oh, off the road in the background to Coach Corey Stas, but look at this round the outside for Rick Putnam. What a brilliant start to this race and indeed the season it's been for him. Dean Dimsel close on the both of them here because they're battling so hard side by side as they get towards the end of the Grand Prix layout. Who's going to back out here? Surely somebody's going to have to into this again. And it's going to be Crown Road who drops out. Here goes Dean Dimsel as well. Looking up the inside of the way towards the north side. Don't forget one of the last times we had an open wheel car like this. He was cartwheeling through the air going through this corner. This time he stays on the ground, which is good. In towards the turn. At one of the north side where they go. Dean Dills has to st stick back in position number three, but look at Rick Putnam, he's flying away with the race lead. Already 1.5 seconds as he gone to the north side for the first time. Yeah, well, let's hope we see if Putnam can actually get through the first lap. That's going to be the main part, I think, as well. Just the fact that the way the curbs are so high, these cars, it doesn't take much, and he made them a couple of mistakes in practice, did Putnam as well, um, which cost him and put him in. Ah, deep. Dean Dills has got it all wrong there. He's just lucky Corey Stas, I believe, is alongside at the moment and is going to go through Corey Stas over Dean Dills. But that's the problem we've got. One simple mistake like that in the F4, you're losing places. Yeah, especially on the opening lap here where everything's so close. It's very close for the AM lead as well. Tim Warshaw has taken it so far, but Pat Mason is right behind. Chase Petter John's up to third from starting fifth. Scott Sandler down to fourth. Dan Crossing in fifth at the moment, the championship leader. As they go up into Shredden, Groitz here. They'll stay single file in pro. It's side by side for the leading arm, though. And here goes Pat Mace into the lead. It's a seventh place overall. Oh, goodness, this is going to be close on the way in towards Arenberg. He'll get the inside line. He'll break late, and he will take the lead. What about Warshaw? Can he get ahead of Petty John? He does just about, but this is a close arm leading battle as well. It's a very good start to this race. Yeah, now we've got Corey Stas making a move past Dean Diltz here at the same time. Stas trying to go round the outs. <laughs> he managed it, but boy, oh boy, was that close. So Stas making his way up into third now. He's got Crapfield in front of him. Crapfield still chasing down Putnam. Putnam's 1.8 seconds down the road. But as you say, Patrick Messick, watch out, Pettijon, Sadler and Kosick. Of course, Kosick leading the AMs at the moment, but he's not quite leading this pack. He's going to have to try somehow to get to the front. Now, how? Not sure, dotting a hoe, probably. Yep, uh, if they're all together by that stage in the, uh, in the lap, by the way, we're in for quite a sight, uh, I would say, in the Anfield, but there's a long way to go until we get to that point, even here on lap number one. As always, four lap races here, eight and a half minute laps, so this is actually going to be one of the longer races, but, uh, you know, not too... Uh, not too long, as we know in the Terra Racing Ring Runners, it's always at relatively short and sharp and always very exciting racing. This is round number four, of course, of our final season in 2024. Oh, that that's race. not going to help. It's, it's not helpful for Tim Warchow, especially. That's pretty unnerving, actually, as he's uh, going to get closed on now by Chase Petron, who's only a quarter of a second behind. There's, of course, before we get to the dotting hill, the long run out of Bergwerk and the run up the hill through the long left-hander as well at Kesselson. So that's going to be the next real flat-out section for the slipstream and maybe another lead change, maybe a change for second place. Certainly, podium positions changing here in the Amphield. In the Amphield. Yeah, but as you say, all of these drivers are very close together at the moment and Sadler is the last in a pack. Kossick's made him a little bit of a mistake. He's just over a second back at this moment in time, but it's going to be, if these four stay together, down the dying at home, we could see two, three, four wide, maybe. 
It's the same up here with Dean Dills, Corey Stas, Evan Crowfield. If they're all still together at the dot in the hole, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle it. You can see at the moment, Corey Stas trying to go around Evan Crowfield. Is he going to be able to make that inside work? He is. It's going to be flat out around there. Don't expect to lift on the left-hander as they're coming into the right-hander now, up over the brow, through the right-hander, and then coming into the carousel section. Tim Wachow did uh, briefly get overtaken by Mesh, but uh, not for long. But, oh, it looks like it's been off. Mesh has gone off, I think, and he certainly has. He's hit the wall, and he's uh, got damage. That looks like a damaged car to me. And there, oh, yeah, the front left wheel isn't even touching the ground anymore. No. So, uh, oh, dear, well, that's going to take some getting back to pit lane. As meanwhile, Putnam's off, because he put, must have popped out the carousel. Goodness me, look at this for the overall lead. Stats goes through, Cromwell goes through. Putnam was two seconds clear of the field. Now he's in the fight with the rest of them. And he did that in, quite in practice. Exactly the same thing. Popped out the carousel in practice and did that exact thing and now it's cost him again and now we've got these front five with David Anders in there and it's going to be interesting to see how these guys handle this now because it's going to be who is going to take it at the front and who's going to be brave enough and see where they're all going to end up on the dot and a hoe because I think this is going to be a very very interesting one as Corey oh, Stas is Stas in the wall the championship leaders off. huge crash just before Brunchen that's a huge accident for Stats. We'll have another look at the end of the race, as always. But that is Corey Stats in the wall and out of this race, certainly out the running for these top positions. And big damage to his championship lead as well as his car. Yeah, he's off. He's in the pits. That's a nine-minute toe at least on that one, whether or not he stays in or decides enough's enough. We'll have to see how it all goes and works out here. Up through Flutter's Garden they go, coming up into the Klein's carousel. These four still not very far apart. Watcho, Sadler and Kosick also not very far apart as well. We're going to see how strong this draft's going to be down this straight. And I can guarantee we're going to end up three wide here. And it looks like Mesek is off again, but he's going to have that. He's got obviously damage. Let's see what happens. Well, this is going to be exciting on the way in towards the tier goal. Now, I think the other three will be worried about Putnam getting the lead here. And, uh, and just driving away, just as he did in the first part of the race. And so Dilts already gets alongside him. Oh, wow, that was close into Galvin Cup. And this could give Crabout the chance to stay away at the head of the field. It's certainly going to uh, disadvantage Dilts now, because Putnam effectively going to get a slipstream right the way down the long back straight now. Hernandez, of course, will get the slipstream on both of them, although he's not really closing in. Now Dilts pulls to the right-hand side, but it's almost pointless, because Putnam will just continue to get the slipstream from Crabout unless the reigning champion helps him out and at the moment he's just not oh no he will so maybe it is going to be a chance for him and he stayed alongside rather well Crowell could be overtaken by both here is he going to be overtaken by one on each side on the way towards the take on maybe he'll stay in the middle of the road it'll be three wide will it not quite but then we'll have to stay behind the two of them tilt gets alongside as they go into the tear gun Careful here through the fast chicanes and into the braking zone. Crowe does stay ahead. Dilts gets into second, Putnam forced down to third. Yeah, Watcho and Sadler, I was keeping, trying to keep an eye on them as they were coming running down as well. And uh, Dave Mull has passed Corey Stavis. It looks like Chase Petterjohn has had a little bit of a moment somewhere on the race circuit as well. And he did that. So we'll have another look back at that one. But watch out leading the arms. Sadler in behind Kosick, not too far back from that. But look at these four cars. David Ander is having a race of his life here. He's having, doing a great job. It's a good time so far in fourth place. Top four still together here end of lap one in the uh, F4 round of the Terra Racing Rigorous here for season four, 2024, towards the Ford curve they go at the dot of this lap. The Grand Prix now, of course, uh, Hernandez is, gonna, I think, going to struggle to hang on. I mean, as you say, it is an impressive drive for him to be here as things stand. He's been here for all three of the rounds uh, so far, but unfortunately has not particularly had uh, the best of the season, especially not in the running for podium places, but here we go, the podiums are, positions are changing, Rick Putnam looking to regain that second place from Dean Diltz here, then through the Schumacher S side by side, yes, that very well. he's got thankfully a slow one, he can get away with it, and Rick Putnam does get away with it, he gets into second place. Yeah, but it's now what Diltz is going to do here, we can't afford to let him get away. He's got to pressure and pressure and pressure. He can't afford 
to let him escape. He's got to use the, the, utilize the draft. He's got to utilize every single part. He's obviously got pace through the Nords itself. So he, he should, I would have thought, technically be able to get keep up. But he's got a couple of places with the draft that he might be able to utilize as well to close that gap. Let Putnam bring him forward into Crowdfield. That's what I would personally want to do. Let's see what uh, happens over the course of this first part of the Nord side, especially here. Will the two leaders get away from the rest, or will Diltz and Hernandez stay with them? Day in the slipstream. What did surprise me actually on the back straight there was was quite how not powerful the slipstream was. I thought it would be a little bit more than that. I mean, it's not as ineffective as the slipstream was in the GT4s last week, mm. where it was almost useless. But it's still not quite as strong as I was maybe expecting. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Is it seems to be more effective in like the Formula Fours and, and the Vs and things like that that you wouldn't expect, you know. But to, to not have it as much in a low downforce machine like the F4 seems a little bit crazy because he was out at six tenths and we've seen others go out at six tenths and they've rocketed up to the back end of the guy in front but these just didn't quite do that so yeah interesting to see how this one's going to work i think we're going to shred points for rick putnam on the outside line crap well, maybe can't afford this because we know how quick putnam is round the outside for shred points gives him the inside for Aramberg if he can stay there crap out on the late breaking line he stays on the road gives the room and they'll remain side by side good battle between the two they'll go down the hill now for a pretty awkward uh, straight to his section but uh, he can't really go side by side for it because it's so wiggly now in towards Adenauer Forest Putnam might give it another go looks on the outside here there's going to be no space there it's difficult to do it through this blind left hander as well onto the brakes they'll go they slow each other up but Krautbaum, importantly, stays ahead of Putnam. I think if he lets it through, he could be in for a difficult rest of the race. It, technically, at the moment for Evan Krautfield, he can hang on to this position all the way through round to the dot and the hoe. He's just got to put his car in the right place. And in, at the right place at the, at, on Nords, on the racetrack, is in the middle. You know, he's got that run up into the carousel, so that might be interesting to see if he, how long he can hold on for there. But I think at the moment, as you say, if you let Putnam go, he's going to be gone. And he doesn't really want that, does Krautfeld. So he's got to put his car in the right place, defend as much as he can, and see what he ends up with coming out of Bergwerk, because that's going to be the, the optional time for Putnam to make that move again. Back straight, it's not on there either, but you know, it's, it's as close as. Um, not too far away though. This is Exmuller, the left hander. Uh, you can very easily go a little bit too deep and end up in the wall, although that probably applies to most corners. Out of uh, the right hander up the hill they go, and uh, now this is the run towards Bergwerk. The next time they hit the brakes will be a very important line selection because you need the run on the exit of Bergwerk right up the way through the uh, through the straight section. I'm not sure what we should really call this, but um, it's just a long, flat-out run on a gentle left-hander through Kesselschen on the way out of Bergwerk. And then the big left-hander is the Mook curve right at the very end of this flat-out section. I'm not sure if they'll even have to lift off in these cars, but it's an important corner for this leading battle. Grumman holds the inside line through Kesselschen. That should give him the inside right the way to the Mook curve, but will it matter at all? I'm not sure his run was really ideal out of Bergwerk at all. And Putnam looks to be through again. Towards the Mook curve, he's single file before they even have to take the turn. And 130 miles an hour, Rick Putnam could indeed get back to the lead. Yeah. I'm worried now. I'm worried now because Putnam is looking quick. Let's see how they get on into the carousel. It was his Achilles heel last lap around. He's just got to make sure that he buries this. And, and, and that's the problem because you've got this very low front left, front wheel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Crapfield survived as well. He's, a, he's survived not only, and he's had a better run actually here as Grandma, so he's right behind him. Now this is going to be a very important section. If Grandma can stay in the slipstream by the back straight, he could be right there again. And maybe this race changes a little bit, but Putnam does look to be the quickest driver of the two. Yeah, he definitely does. He's got to try and stay with him, Crowfield. You've just got to kind of, you know, pick him up, stick him in your pocket and hope for the best, I think, on that one at some of these corners. Let the car run. Oh, that's not going to help, and he's gone round. 
Tottenham, there's me, the top two in the championship have now both gone off today. Grapmout down to fourth, and that's as bad as it will get, but it does allow Putnam into the lead of this race by some distance. There goes Dave Mull down the inside, and indeed through, and to link goes Dave Mull, so, uh, so he's made up some progress there. But uh, Grapmout goes for a big spin, and uh, on a day where he should be gaining lots of points from Corey Stas, he's still gaining lots, but uh, maybe slightly less spots than he was after that spin. Yeah, definitely. Play on that one. It, it's so hard. I, I think that's the thing. We've seen so many. We just saw one earlier on in a broadcast we did that, you know, the leader who had a great opportunity to get points over the, his championship rival spun and made a mistake, didn't get the points. It, it, I think mindset's got to be if you see your championship leader go out and you're in second and you can catch up you know try and get points take take a little bit of time i know it was fighting with putnam and the adrenaline and the racist instincts but play it smart and you know unfortunately for crapville that just didn't quite happen that time around well he's uh, gonna have to fight back here More right ahead of him and uh taking a bit of a tighter line into Gavin Goff there. Through he'll go, and uh, now he'll just uh, grab the slipstream, and I think he'll just draft past. Let's have a look and see. On board with Grant Road, and uh, we'll pull to the middle of the road, but it doesn't really matter at all. He's right on the right hand side. Grant Road, as long as he's got the deadline speed required, then he should breeze past here. And indeed, he does have his deadline speed to uh, get past the people. So, that's, uh, that's all okay for him, although Moore will be able to get back in behind him. Will he be able to go back past here? Watch on the left hand side here, he's going again. I think Moore mm. is, uh, is looking at uh, fourth place again here. Right, right, if he wants to gain back some of those places that he lost in that spin, is uh, needing to make this overtake and hasn't. So mm. Moore is just uh, preventing the progress here for Trevor. Of course, there's perfectly good time to This is a proper battle for fourth place but one that Grabon could really do without. Yeah, he could, but then again, when we talk about the setups and the gearing and whether or not you're on longs or what you're short or what the standard, it really does depend. But you saw Krautfeld maxing out down the dot and a hoe. You know, the dashboard on the right-hand side couldn't even tell us what speed he was going because he was getting to the red line, coming back, getting to the red line, coming back, getting to the red line. So, yeah, I think Dave Mole just has got a little bit more of a higher gearing in that car and was able to get him back again by the time they got into Tiergarten. This is now for Crowdfield, this is his moment now. Use the in, the, the, the Grand Prix circuit. Use the beginning of Nords to try and open over that gap over Mole because at the moment, that's what he's got to do. If he stays within a certain distance of him, you know, Mole's just going to keep coming back at him and coming back at him. And, and, and Crowdfield's got to use all of his skills in the Nordschleifer to try and open up a gap so when it comes to the run out of Bergwerk, he isn't going to get done. When it comes to the run and through Galgenkopf, he's not going to get done because he's opened up a big enough gap. So, you know, have to see how that one happens here for Crowdfield and whether or not he can escape Dave Mole at this moment in time. It's not only going to be about escaping Dave Mole, but actually trying to catch up to uh, Dave Hernandez as well. He will feel he's catching just 3.2 seconds with uh, two more laps remaining here. I think there's, uh, there's definitely scope for that gap to come down. The gap, by the way, for Scott Sadler at the front of the Anfield is 4.5 seconds now. He was being trailed by Dan Kosick earlier on in the North Cypher on the previous lap, but he's now got a much bigger lead. But again, Dan Kosick, second place in this race currently, showing us why he is the championship leader in the AM class. He qualified in fifth place, started fairly leisurely in fifth position, but he's just worked his way through the field with others going off the road alongside him and around him. He has worked his way through the field gently and he's back up to second place. Looks like he'll be retaining an even bigger championship lead by the end of this race. Yeah, he's doing a great job as Dan Cossett, to be fair. Even in the overalls, he's sitting in second, which is absolutely amazing for him. So fair play to Dan on that one. I think going forward at this moment in time, again, he's the number one that's just got to complete the race. I think... Oh. Crapfield run a little bit wide there. That, that would have been interesting if he just got that all a little bit wrong. I think um, Kosick has kind of got the right idea. He, he kind of knew 
that obviously there was going to be people off, it's open wheelers at Nord, so there's going to be a, a lot of, at times, carnage and chaos. Started, as he said, he's up, what is he up at the moment? Four places. So started down in 11th, people went off in and around him, and he said thank you very much. So fair play to Dan Kosick. However, Mole is not letting Krautfeld escape here. Krautfeld now on that run down into Arenberg, and he's just losing temps at the moment. And that's going to frustrate Krautfeld, I think, because he knows he's quicker at certain points. But the draft just keeps the two cars together. It does, and maybe Mull is just getting pulled along by Krautfeld here and might be dragged towards Dave Fernandez, who he lost touch with pretty early on in the opening lap. This is by far the closest on the circuit, even if it's not really a battle for now. And I think it's probably best there for both of them, but Dave Mull included. They don't battle just for the moment. You can see him pulling a little bit wide on the way up towards Andal Force, just lengthening the uh, lengthening the circuit slightly there, so that he can uh, he can make sure he stays behind. Grab Adam doesn't end up in the back of him over the top of the brow of the hill there. Just under two seconds now, the gap up to Hernandez. If they can get there by the back straight this lap, I think they'll be pleased, but after that, it's going to be difficult to catch the likes of Dean Dilson and Rick Putnam. And again, Crapwell's going to be returning back to that error on the previous lap and, uh, uh, and ruining his mistake a little bit. Mm. Uh, it will be the fact that he, everything that he's going to do now for the rest of this race will be looking back at that one moment. Because how close could he have been to Putnam going on to the final lap. How could he have got Putnam? Could he have won the race? Could he, could he, could he, could he? Because that's all it is, is shoulda, woulda, coulda here. So yeah, for um, Kraftfeld at the moment, he's got to try and look forward, but he's only got, well, we've got about a lap and a half to go here as well, as he's moving slowly into the back of Hernandez, but Mole is still there. Mole's not giving him that break to get away and, and for Mole, he's doing a great job. He's been pulled into Hernandez by a faster Krautfeld, and he's staying there due, purely due to the draft scenario. Well, you're perfectly entitled to do so, and he's yeah. going to be quick enough to stay there. So, uh, fair play to him, not taking anything away from him. Here, out of Bergwerk they go. Uh, his run's decent as well compared to Krautfeld, so he's not going to be near overtaking him, I don't think, but he will be closing in here. And the, the, the sort of reverse draft effect will just push Krautfeld on towards the end of this straight as well, I feel. And towards the Mugger. Let's wait and see on the, on that front as they make their way up the hill. It's a long drag up here. Really quite, uh, quite difficult for the driver ahead. You're punching a really big hole in the air all the way up here. Look at this. Mull is right behind him by the time they get to the fast and committed left-hander itself. They're not lifting off here in the F4 car, so effectively the set stream continues on here. Where you'd normally lift off and, uh, and have to back off. Now he's finally lifting because he's just catching too quickly. And Flat out through that left-hander at the top of the hill. I'm not sure we've seen that from any car so far this season. We won't be seeing it from many more either. I suppose the, the LMP2s mm -hmm. next week will be flat out around there too, but uh, that's a high-speed corner. And only the real high downforce cars on this calendar will be going flat out through there. Yeah, you, you're not going to get a lot of others this season as well. Let's be real, the Mustangs not, the Porsche Cup, TCR, Mazdas you might, because obviously they don't go very fast. Uh, SR8 is possibly is down on December the 4th. Uh, you're not going to get it out the Arcas, let's be real about it. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. There's probably only two, LMP2, maybe the SR8s might be able to do it. And I believe the, the MX5s can, but that's only due to the fact that they don't go that fast up there. I'm really looking forward to the, uh, to the MX5 race, I've got to say. I think that's some of the best racing you can have around this season. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, looking forward to that. Um, towards the final sector for these. So uh, Krautwald is close to Hernandez now. He's, but not only has he got there by the back straight, he's actually got there a bit early. So this battle for third place is going to commence uh, pretty early on. I imagine Krautwald will wait for the back straight, but uh, he'll already be sizing up his opportunities, wondering if he'll have a way through. Yeah, I'm wondering if Mole, um, what Hernandez is going to do here. I'm not going to say he's going to... Uh, the, the gap to Mole is not that far. So if Hernandez wanted to air on the side of caution, he could probably try and back Krautfeld in. He's got quite a little twisty section. He's got a right, a left, and then into the Klein's carousel. So he might... Yeah, see, I, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not, I think. 
It's gonna, but then again, I think depending on what Crowfell's got down the dot and the hoe and how fast he can get and whether or not he's going to hit that rev counter early, it's going to allow Dave Mole to possibly hold on here. Sure, if Mull is well, he's quite just going to get something, isn't he? He's, he's got enough, so he's got a good run out of Garden Cop from Mull's there. So, uh, what about Crowdfell? First of all, he will uh, be bit to sit here for the first time in a little while, and they'll be revving out at the top of the rev rate here as well. That could be a bit of a problem for him, but he does gain uh, now. Finally, it does pull past his speed, puts him ahead of Dave uh, or away from Dave Mull. Actually, he's beginning to struggle to hold on to the zip stream. Hernandez will just uh, fall back into him here, and Mull will start to gain again. The two of them remain side by side, even though they're not actually uh, oh. level with each other anymore. And I think Hernandez there was giving that one up rather than trying to keep Crowdrun behind for an extra lap. He maybe is just realising that Crowdrun is a bit quicker. Mull will now be his big battle for the remainder of the race. Yeah, but I don't get that. He didn't slot it back in behind him. We've seen it work. We've seen Crowdrun. Mole did it on the last one, slot straight back in behind Kratfeld, got him again, go down into Tiergarten and frustrated him for at least half a lap of the next lap. Hernandez could have done that same thing, I'm not quite sure why he didn't. I, I get the, the... Oh! All right, if he keeps doing that, he's going to have a problem. But I get the quicker thing, and he is quicker, but, you know, come on, boys, defend. Give it some. You know what I mean? Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, was just looking up the inside there. He just caught up in time, and now he's surely confirmed fifth place. He needs to get going in here rather quickly, otherwise Scott Sadler will be coming up on the back of him as the AM leader. I don't think he's close enough. Oh. And so, Ball spins around, and that's going to be pretty disappointing for him. Ten seconds now behind Hernandez, who he's got no hope of catching without an error. I think he just saw the two ahead of him slowing up a bit more than he expected. He had to hit the brakes very lightly through the corner, and that's put him around, I think. Yeah, he was on the curb as well, didn't help. He was right on the inside curb, and, and that didn't help him at all, to be blatantly honest. And unfortunately, you know, he just pressed the brake and around he went. So I think at the moment, as you say, he's cemented in that fifth place currently. Solomon's in the pit lane, but he's just entered in. He didn't do anything wrong. He just drove into the pit lane there. So we'll have to see if he comes back out for the final lap. But such a shame. Mole got, he was well there as well. He had his tow rope hooked to the back of Krautfeld and Krautfeld pulled him all the way into Hernandez. And then just within one brief moment, poof, it was gone. It looks like our remaining battle on the circuit then is going to be for second overall. Dean Diltz has not quite got the speed to put Evan Crowdrun away just yet. And on this final lap, they may well go into battle one more time. I'm not sure why, by the way, Anthony Solomon had to come into pit lane that time round. 53 seconds in the box. He's back behind Curry Stas and Patrick Bates now, and he's back out on the circuit. I don't really know what that's all about. Um, open set up fuel, maybe. Maybe. That's a long pit stop, though. 52 seconds. Yes, yeah. That's got to be 40 of that. has got to be speeded in the pit lane or something. That's that's too long. That's too long. Tim Watchell's just had a little bit of a moment, so we'll have to catch a little bit at that towards the end as well. But, yeah, I'm hoping 42 of that, 40 seconds of that, is to stop and go for uh, speeding. accidentally changed tyres when he didn't want to. Maybe. But, uh, it's, it's, it's entirely possible. <laughs> Seven seconds, the leading gap for Putnam now over Dean Diltz, who will be, as I said earlier, looking over his shoulder, really, rather than uh, looking ahead at the race leader. One second to, to go. Oh, there's Rick Putnam. What a last few weeks he's had. Uh, didn't uh, uh, attend the opening round of the season, unfortunately, in the open wheelers, but in the Audi 90 GTO, he was on fire. I just wondered, well, maybe he's driven that car a little bit more than the rest of them. But he backed that up with second place last week in the GT Falls. He might be backing up with another victory in a different car, this time an open wheeler, this time the FAA 4 car. What a great first third mm. of the season for him. Yeah, if he can keep it up now, 
could be tough for Krautfeld uh, or anybody in front for, uh, for them to hold on. Because, you know, he's, he's taking points out of people constantly, isn't he? And at the moment, he's taking points out of Stas. He's taking points out of Krautfeld. He's taking points out of Hightower, who's not here this week. Dave Mole. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where Putnam ends up here. I can tell you that much. But Krautfeld and Deals, not too far apart. Oh, here we go. In towards the siphon for Dilson and then Krautfeld. Looking to recover from that spin he had through on the uh, second lap, I think it was, towards the final sector of the race. Evan Crutrod, he was trying to chase down Rick Putnam, who, as you can see, was very, very difficult to keep up with. A little bit over the limit in trying to do that, but uh, now this is very much within his uh, remit. He might even have a go to Bergwerk, because Dean Dilt's gone up on the kerb there. And then Crutrod now might well have a chance. He's on the inside of the kick towards Bergwerk. This is something you don't see very often. On the brakes, he'll be on the outside line. He breaks later, uses the downforce, sweeps around the outside, and he'll be hoping he hasn't gone too soon, allowing Dean Dilts to get back in the section and get back through on him here. Yeah, uh, well, Dilts now has got to have the opportunity, isn't he? He's bringing it down from 3-7 there as well. So, but Dean Dilts, just go and sit in behind him, because trust me, by the time you get past this bit, you're going to close up at a rapid rate of knots. There you go. It's just... That, that's it now. As soon as they get onto the straight of this run, it, it is literally just full closure from the car behind. And now it's down to Dilts. What is he going to do? Can he stay in front? Can he get past Crowdfield? Stay in front, going onto the dot in the hoe, and then maybe swap places, you know, the other way? Because Crowdfield looks quicker than Dilts in some of the twisty bits. So. Can't afford to really lose that draft at the moment. I was, I was going to suggest he would go down the inside there and mm. have a go, but actually decided not to. And look at that already through the carousel. I, I think Crack Rider is the fastest driver through the carousel, actually. Look at the Putnam. And, uh, and so I think he's quicker than everyone, although I'm not sure Dean Dilts had a great run through there. And there's only 1.7 behind now. I think you're right. I think Dilts would have been better served to have a go there, mm -hmm. even to the book curve or indeed the corner before the carousel on the brakes and try and stay ahead of Krautrod, keep that track position because actually keeping up with him, once you're behind him, does seem quite difficult. Yeah, and that's the thing. Once Krautrod sort of opened his legs up a little bit, mm. nobody else has really had a chance to stay with him. And, and yeah, it's out a second now, to be fair. I think it's going to be Putnam Krautrod Dilts on that one. And let's see Hernandez can pull speed out of somewhere in that car. But at the moment yeah I, yeah I would have liked to have seen Dilts have a go I think that was the thing he had the run and it, it might have been better as you said better for him to have a go at least give Krautfeld something to think about which he didn't do and now you can kind of see the repercussions of it certainly can the gaps now all above a second as we get towards the end of this race but all in all a, a good race I, I, I think we've been entertained by at least a battle at uh, at any one time this one and it's been uh, it's not all been about waiting for the back straight has it it, it is no. sometimes in, in different cars different categories but actually in this car we've seen decent amounts of racing all around the circuit all around the Nord Cypher on the Grand Prix circuit as well so I think it's been a good addition to the series this season yeah it definitely has and they've covered them pretty much 100% of the racetrack where the, they've made their moves so I think it's been good for them and, and it's been a good race. The open wheelers do deliver and I'm looking forward to LMP2 next week though. I've got to be on, in, honest with that one because I think LMP2's in the carousel, low front, hmm, surely nothing could go wrong with that, right? Yeah, it's going to be uh, very interesting indeed to see what uh, what happens there. But let's uh, close out this week. First of all, Rick Putnam just needs to execute one last braking zone before he takes his second race victory in three weeks. And his third podium in a row as well he is rapidly coming up onto the back of the other drivers in this championship as well. With Corey Stas especially having an off day, this is a huge performance for Rick Putnam into the final few corners. Rick Putnam wins for the second time this season in the Tower Racing Ring Runners. This time it's in an open wheeler. 
and he will be delighted as it's dominant again. 8.3 seconds, the gap at the moment to crack round. I don't think Hernandez is quite going to get to Dilts. No, he doesn't in the background. Meanwhile, Corey Stas has caught up Jamie Bender. Yeah, that, that gap closed really quickly. And I was like, oh, what's gone on? But it clearly is just on pace that Stas has got. Now, is he going to be able to get him on the run down into the dotting a hoe? Is Bender going to come back at him? Or is there just going to... Oh, Stas is looking mighty quick here. Bender's got a... He is. Oh, dude. Hard afford to lose a position before the dotting a hoe. Just wonder how from this race would have been if he'd have oh. just kept it on the road on that opening lap. And here he goes. Off the inside into the top ten. Curry Stas recovers what he realistically could from this race after crashing on the opening lap. We'll have another look at that crash in a few moments' time, of course, but he gets that position. I think he's put sufficient time into Jamie Bender through that Calvin Cough corner as well to put him away and to hold on to 10th place here. Yeah, I believe he has. I think the draft is going to be strong, but is it going to be that strong? Dylan Hesseling is going to come over the line as well very shortly. Great job from Dylan finishing this race, of course. Um, and uh, it's had somewhat of an up and down opening for Mr. Hesselink on that one. But Stas looks. Yeah, I don't think Bender's going to get there. Okay. It's close, though. Bender will come with a real head of steam here to the final few corners. If there's a brave dive, then maybe he'll be denied. But it no. doesn't look like it. Boris Stas is going to hold on to 10th place and he will lose his championship lead as a result with uh, Evan Crowder up in second position. Should mean he loses it anyway. It's going to be quite close actually, but he should lose his championship lead. Jamie Bender will finish in 11th. Mace will finish 12th overall. And uh, even more important, possibly, excuse me, finish 6th in his class. So that is it. For, oh dear, that was... Oh, there it is. It goes over the line there. He blinked slightly before the line. Uh, but uh, there you have it. There is the fourth round of the Terror Racing Ring Runners for season four of 2024. And it's won by Rick Putnam. 8.4 seconds his gap over Evan Crackwell with Dean Diltz uh, finishing on the podium with them. Dave Hernandez and Dave Mull were the next pros ahead of the AM winner, Scott Sadler. AM championship leader extends that lead. Dan Cossacks finishes seventh ahead of... Tim Wardshow, Dylan Hessling in the top 10 for, I think, his best result of the season so mm -hmm. far. Corey Stas finishes 10th after his crash in this one. Jamie Bender and Pat Mace, the final drivers on the lead lap. Anthony Solomon retired on the final lap. Chase Pettijohn retired after a couple. Jacob Burke didn't start, unfortunately, and so finishes 15th. Um, with that all said and done, then, let's have a look at some replays. And uh, there were a few from the start of the race, especially this was the back end of the incident for Pat Mish, who got in the wall for the foot curve. And this is what happened to him afterwards, as he only had three wheels touching the ground. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can find where it happened here. This is just up the road a little bit. This is just before, so we'll have to wait a little bit here, but uh, this is about 30 seconds or so before. I'm going to... Well, First, I'm not really sure how he's ended up at the wall, in the wall at the book curve, to be honest, because he didn't spin round from, from what we saw. And, and also, we didn't see much understeer about these cars either, in terms of running at high speed through that left-hander, getting close to hitting the wall because of understeer. So I'd be surprised if it's that, but maybe it's a side-by-side -side moment. They're getting very close behind him here on the way in towards Bergwer. This is, of course, earlier on in the race, very early on in the race indeed. So uh, is it going to be a side-by-side -side moment, I wonder? Yeah, Let's see if he, what happens here. You can see, there's watch out in behind him, isn't it, I think. And um, in that, that 19 machine. Was there any, yes, it looks like we're going to get that side by side that we said. Not three right, surely, obviously, they're looking at it, and, uh, and they will get signal fired out, so on the inside, oh. slight contact with Wachow and hits the wall, that's quite awkward, it was contact, it's awkward contact, but the way he hits the front left corner on the barrier there is what does the real bit of the damage. Yeah, absolutely, there's nothing you can do about that, once that car's going in, it's in. This is Corey Stas's incident that we saw. I saw this on board at the time, but I think he hits the inside curve, oh no, he doesn't hit the inside curve, excuse me, just gets a slide and then tries to correct it, look at that, big damage. Mm. Chase Petterjob went off not 
far after this. Unfortunately, for Chase. Oh, 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 God, where are you going? Oh, 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 uh, oh. Okay. And then jumps back to the pit, so I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Messek has another moment after. This is obviously getting... Is he trying to get the car back? Yeah, because the car's still damaged there oh, as well. No. Not good. Even more. Yeah, even more. He did broken. eventually, by the way, drive back to pit lane and, 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 and get that car repaired the old-fashioned way. So, uh, so fair play to him for that. This is Anthony Solomon, who was on the Grand Prix circuit and goes quite fast in towards turn three, too fast in turn three, mm. and spins around. He wouldn't finish the race eventually, finishing one lap oh. down. I don't expect him to know why. Oh, yeah. Bender did Bender, it. Bender, <laughs> got a bit of a preview there. Spun around as well. In same corner. Um... So, yeah, there is the recovery of Anthony Solomon, and there is Jamie Bender going off round that one as well. Um, Tim, watch out at the moment. This is how we lost a place to Scott Sadler. It's coming in just, ooh, oh, big whoa, snap. Whoa. He's lucky to get away with that. Mm. Hit the wall quite hard there. And, uh, very lucky to get away with that. I think that was... Uh, was that Scott Sadler and was that, yeah, uh, yeah, was that Dan Kosick as well? Yeah, so, uh, Sadler got past Watchow, Kosick got past uh, at the same time. Yeah. Now, this is obviously what we were watching live at the time of Craftfield. He goes off, off again, and then round he goes. He, he got away with that in hindsight because we have seen that go a lot worse for people before on that one. So Evan Craftfield quite lucky. Lucky in a sense, yeah. He just went a bit narrow into Vipu in there. Uh, the first part of the kerb he saw, he just went a bit narrow, and that puts you on the outside kerb. Just spinning around very easily in these cars. He's actually quite lucky that he didn't get beached on the kerb. We've seen that once or twice this season. These lower, the cars lower to the ground, they can get beached. If they're not that low to the ground, so you can get beached around here. This is Dave Moore. If you saw he that. saw those two cars ahead of him, below, I think. And yeah, no, he, if you also look the tyre. down and, in, the, in the corner. Yeah, watch the left side of his car. It's all on the curb as well. So he's there and he's instantly on, on the curb. And it's just nothing. There's nothing for him to be able to uh, contend with on that one. This is what Charles' other moment. This is on the white flag lap. This is on the final lap now for Tim. Watch out. And again, looks like... Oh. oh, yes. There we go. He knew he was going in too fast there from quite a long way out and just had to slow down through the corner. He's lucky he had quite such a big gap behind him because uh, he was able to get to around. Anthony Solomon. Uh, so same place, but it looks of it. Very same corner. Spun around in the same place. Yeah, oh. hit, the, oh, hit the wall, took the rear wing off, and that's what took him back to pit lane. Yeah, he went straight back after that as well. But that is it. Not too dramatic this week. Not on the replay front. As we... Uh, at Solomon trying to uh, get himself back again. There he goes. Um, but uh, but there we go. That is uh, that. Thanks very much for watching round four of the Tower Racing Ring Runners. It's been uh, a good race as always. Uh, and next week, as we say, we'll be back for the LMP2s. Back in our, uh, what's hopefully going to become a usual Thursday spot for this series. Uh, on Recording it on Thursday so we can get it to you the next day after the race has happened. So uh, we'll uh, look forward to your company then when we're back on the combined long layout for the second time this season. Um, but uh, for now, from myself, Ian Leary and James Poffett alongside me, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with the LMP2s in one week's time. Goodbye for now. Oh, my God.